Hey, what's going on guys? Ryan over at Two Minute Tennis. We are gonna be live here for about 20 minutes. I've got a Zoom lesson, which I'm super excited about. If you don't know what Zoom lessons are, they're where people send me videos of their technique. Like for instance, in a half an hour, I have a lesson with someone uh, and we're going over their serve and their backhand. And I, they send me videos of their strokes. I share my screen on Zoom. I put them side by side with the pros. Super cool, and you get the whole recording. It's better than any in-person lesson you can possibly take, and I mean that. Uh, they're absolutely incredible, incredible lessons. If you want me to help you, just go to twominutetennis.net, and you can sign up for a Zoom private lesson. What's going on, guys? I'm gonna be live here. Yes, I am live. You are, well, unless I'm recorded, because I am gonna upload this, but I am live right now. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up? Hello, sir. What's up, Rishi? Thanks so much for joining me. Throw, uh, throw your questions in the comments and I will respond. Hey, what's up? Hey, D, I remember you from yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna be live for about 20 minutes or so. So let's talk one thing here. And I actually am thinking about this topic to talk to you really quickly. Hey, what's up, Tom? Based on a Zoom lesson, actually two Zoom lessons, two Zoom lessons, and I'll answer that question, Ghost. I'll answer that question. Hey, what's up, Chris? What's going on? Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on here. There's a topic that always is seen in my students' technique on their serve, and it's this position right here. I'll tell you, this position with the hand above the elbow is one of the worst positions to get into on your serve. And when I say get into, I mean very specifically get into it, not pass through it, because you want to pass through it. You want to pass through this position, but you don't want to get into it. Let me explain. If you want to hit a better serve, and I'm going to use this wall as my target, all right? That wall is going to be my target. Let me tilt the, the phone down here a little bit. Maybe that'll be better. When you lift your racket up on your serve, I want you to lift the racket up like this. I want you to bring the racket up in this position, not this position. And let me explain. I watch so many recreational players because so many people send me videos saying, hey Ryan, can you help me? Can you analyze my serve? Can you analyze my backhand? Can you analyze my, my match play and, and go through points with me point by point and show me how I can improve and how can, I, how can I get better? I watch so many players on their serve as their racket comes up, they immediately get into this position. So it looks like this. And you see coaches talking about it on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. They talk about getting into this position. And we'll have students throw a ball from this position, hand above the elbow. And they'll talk about the L. And they'll say, get in this position and then throw. The problem is you're cutting short by about half the power supply in the serve. And by the way, we got 25 people on, which is so cool. And only four likes. You got to push that like button. All right, thank you so much because it definitely helps me and I appreciate it. It helps get more people on the, on, the, uh, on the live, so thank you so much. When you lift your racket up, you do not want to get into the trophy position. You want to pass through the trophy position. Don't get into it. See, when you lift your racket up, the goal is to have your hand and your elbow around the same height and your strings pointing down. You could place a ball in the throat of the racket at this point. Look at JJ Wolf serve. Look at Riley Opelka. When Opelka brings the racket up, when Federer brings the racket up, they're in this position. When the racket is around shoulder level, you can place a ball in the throat. They aren't going across their feet and immediately going like this. They're not lifting the racket up like this. They're actually elbowing someone behind them. JJ Wolf is only six feet tall. Now I'm only five nine, so I wish I were six feet tall. And he's he's six feet tall, which isn't super big on the Pro Tour. And he can serve 136 miles an hour. Now, some of that is just God-given ability. But there's also the technical standpoint and the biomechanics of what he is doing in order to maximize his height and the lever that is his arm. So when he brings the racket up, he brings the racket like this. The number one power source on the serve, the number one power source on the serve, and if you have not hit that like button, please do so. Please hit the like button. Thank you so much. The number one power source is the elbow 
coming forward and up. Your elbow going forward and up. So on the, from the side view, it looks like this. That's the number one power source. And the reason is because it produces a circle. Look at the circle that is being created, right? That's the whole reason that I recommend people wear a birthday hat. Love your channel, mate. Thanks. So, hey, thanks so much, Ruben. I really appreciate it. So when you look, when you look at a circular motion that is done correctly, you'll often see that the racket comes very close to the head and that the person would actually hit the birthday hat. And not everybody hits the birthday hat on the Pro Tour. My favorite player of all time, Pete Sampras, would not have hit the birthday hat. He's more over here, kind of like Chapo, not as extreme as Chapo. But when the racket comes in over the head and creates the circle, that's the number one power source. It is not the legs, by the way. And I'm not being, uh, I'm an Agassi guy. Yeah, I liked Agassi too, but Sampras was my guy because he always went to the net and I like that. When you look at wheelchair tennis players, and, and I'm not being insensitive here, I'm, I'm just stating a fact. Wheelchair tennis players can serve 100 miles an hour. How is that? It's because of the arm action. And when you can use your legs, you can increase the speed of your serve. But the majority of the power comes from the elbow driving forward and up. Now, why does this matter between this and this? What is the definition of speed? The definition of speed is distance over time. So let's take JJ Wolf, for instance. JJ has a very low toss. His toss timing is 0.62 seconds. What I mean by that is when you put the ball at the top of the head, when the ball is at the top of the head, you start a timer. And until contact, it's 0.62 seconds. Well, he has very little time to swing, which is good, by the way. You want very little time to swing, but what you, because that produces racket speed. If you've ever been late to work, you know that you got to drive fast. It's the same thing. So when the toss is low and then his elbow goes back like this, when you watch JJ, when he's lifting his racket, he's elbowing behind him. Now he has a far distance for his elbow to go in a very short amount of time. And what does that produce? Racket speed, right? You don't want to toss high. Tossing high doesn't give you more time to hit the ball. It gives you more time to swing, but it gives you less time to hit the ball because the ball's passing through the window of the racket very quickly. So you want a lower toss so that the ball's just kind of sitting there so you have a long time to hit it relative based, you know, to, relative to the, to the path of the, the ball dropping 9.8 meters per second per second. But when you pull your elbow back, now you have a very far distance for that elbow to travel. And that's that whole idea that Vic Braden came up with 50 years ago about elbowing someone behind you. When you elbow someone behind you, you then have a very far distance for that elbow to travel. So please, on your serve, do not immediately get into this position, hand above the elbow. If you look at JJ, his elbow's back. You look at Riley Opelka, they lift the racket and their elbow's back. They're in this position, not this position. They're not going like this. They get to here, and then as the racket passes in over the head, if you stop the video, they look like this. You look at Federer, you can stop every pro player in the trophy position, but they are not getting into that position. They are lifting the racket up level. You look at, um, I was just looking at Kyrgios. When Kyrgios, because uh, I have a lesson in 25 minutes on Zoom with a student. And he's taking his racket way back here, way back, and then bringing it in. And I'm going to put him side by side on Zoom. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show him everything. And I'm going to show him Sam Groth. And Sam brings the racket right in front of his body. In fact, if his racket, if Sam's racket, let me show you this. This is such a cool explanation of how to serve. So here's a handheld mirror, right? You can actually see yourself right now. There you go, there you can see yourself. So here's a handheld mirror. When you bring your racket up, try to have your shirt reflecting against your body, right? Against the, um, the, the mirror. So try to bring your racket like this. You look at Kyrgios. When Kyrgios is bringing his racket up, his racket is reflecting his pants. So he, you know, he goes like this and the racket's here, and that's when it comes up to the birthday hat. 
So when you look at from the back, it looks like this, that he's in this position where you can put a ball in the throat. So don't immediately get your hand above your elbow. Lift your racket up like JJ or Riley or like Sam Groth or Kyrgios, where the racket's coming up like this. Now your elbow is so far back, it has a really far distance to go. And if you have a lower toss like Riley, like Federer, Federer's toss timing is 0.83 seconds. Uh, you, you look at Kyrgios, his toss timing is around 0.7 seconds. You get uh, JJ, his toss timing is 0.62. Again, toss timing is you put yourself on video and when the ball is at the top of the head, you click the timer and you see how long it takes until you contact the ball. My recommendation is 0.6 to 0.9 seconds. That's the range of acceptability. Uh, so please, when you serve, go like this, not like this, and have your hand above your elbow. You, you shorten the distance the elbow has to travel. And that, that's not the definition of speed. If you can increase the distance you have to go over a shorter amount of time, distance over time, then we're talking about uh, the, um, uh, the speed being what you want. All right, we got to go back to Chris Reed because I feel like there's a good question from Chris. So I got to go all the way back. Doo -doo. Uh, idea for good drills to do on court with myself to work on ground strokes when I don't have a ball machine to feed me. Uh, struggle seems to be with unit turn and keeping my left hand uh, out in front on my forehand. Sure. Well, look, you can, if you can, I would highly recommend, if you don't have a ball machine, I would highly recommend getting a Topspin Pro. Uh, and the beauty of that is it just gives you the reps. Like people think, oh no, a Topspin Pro is only if you're struggling with, um, uh, with Topspin. It's not, it just gives you a ball to hit. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna work with your left hand is just take the racket back with only one hand. This is a classic, like this is older than me. <laughs> I'm 44 and people were doing this forever ago. So just learn to take the racket back with just your non-hitting hand on the throat of the racket. And then obviously you wanna turn with both hands. When you hit the ball, the goal is that you are waving to your opponent as you strike the ball. When you look at Leighton Hewitt, when you look at uh, Djokovic, they look like they're actually waving to the opponent as they strike the ball. So here's a really simple thing that you can do, Chris is I'm gonna use a foam ball so I don't put a hole in the wall, but you can just drop hit a ball. In fact, I'm gonna use my daughter's racket because it's gonna be a little shorter. Here's my daughter's racket. It's gonna be a little shorter. What I want you to do is I want you to just drop a ball, turn with two hands, and I want you to finish looking through your arms. Now check this out. I am finishing my forehand while looking through my arms. And I'm kind of like walking like an Egyptian. If you know that song from the 80s, The Bangles, Walk like an Egyptian. When you are done hitting a forehand, I actually want you to look through your arms when you're done. Here's the reason why. Because when you finish, when you look at Nadal and he does this, he only has his hand down here. He has this hand down here. I actually want you, since you're working on having that hand up, I want you to look through your arms. This is no different than when they do that buggy whip and they finish above them. If you just grab on with your non-hitting hand on, onto the racket, It'll make sure that you swing up. It'll also make sure that you activate that left hand. So take the racket back with both hands. Just drop a ball to yourself. Turn with both hands. Wave to your opponent as you contact the ball. And then look through your arms when you're done to make sure that you've swung up and that you've activated that left hand. The left hand is so important. Usually people kind of like pull it down and then their swing goes across. I want you to have your left hand here waving and actually... So many of my students, their forehands are improved by having the racket go up above your head like this. Uh, you might know Legal Eagle. He's one of my students online here on Zoom. I've taught him probably 20 lessons. Uh, you might know the channel. It's a very well-known YouTube channel, Legal Eagle. He's like the number one YouTube lawyer on YouTube. So he's been taking lessons with me for about a year and a half on Zoom. And he's a good player. He's a very good player. And one of the ways that I had him improve his forehand was actually to play matches. And I watch him on swing vision play matches competitively. And his arms are like this. Not all the time, but just if he starts to feel like, oh, I'm starting to lose my forehand, he starts catching his racket above his head and his forehand is so much deeper. He hits the net less and he wins more. Uh, you got it, Chris. Uh, do you ever coach players to point with their left hand? No, um, I don't. 
Uh, I don't pe teach people to point with the left hand because that actually gets them to do this. It actually gets you to bring the left arm the opposite direction you want. So I want them turning with both hands and then as the racket's dropping, you clear this hand. So the non-hitting hand should clear as the racket goes down. So watch this, my racket's going down and my non-hitting hand's going forward. That's how they work. So they go back together. Let me tilt this down a little bit. They should go back together. Then the non-hitting hand should go forward as the racket drops and then you're waving so it looks like this. It's going forward. And then as you hit, you're here. And then what I teach is just catch up here where you could finish like Nadal or you could finish like Djokovic and, and even Federer, but I want the left hand up here. So I'm a big fan of that like high finish that Dominic Team does when he's practicing. I see one, um, let's see, I've got a one-handed backhand, but a two-handed flat top. I've been told this is a terrible form. Do you agree? No. I've got a, uh, I've got a one-handed backhand slice, but a two-handed top spin. I think that's what, that's, every single pro on the tour who's got a two-handed top spin backhand. So no, that's not terrible at all. Any tip on how to find the right distance on the two-handed backhand in order to not hit too close or far away from the body? So uh, Euros, I don't know how to pronounce your name, I apologize. Um, usually when people are too close to the ball, it is because they are not closing the racket face. So I know this seems like it's kind of out of left field, but let me explain. The reason players get too close to the ball typically on a two and a backhand is because they are pulling across to hit the ball. You look at Steve Johnson. The reason Steve Johnson cannot hit a two-handed backhand is because he doesn't close his racket. His racket is like this in the back. Well, if his racket's like this in the back, when he gets to the ball, it'll be open, right? That's just the way our arms work. Our arms are a pendulum. So if the racket's straight up and down back here, it'll be open when you get to the ball. So he has to not drop below the ball and he has to swing across. So what I would do is I would say, look, why are you getting too close to the ball or too far away? And what I would say is it's most likely not the primary issue that the distance you are from the ball and guys, I got about five minutes left. The distance you are from the ball is actually based on the, uh, the racket face and that you're having to swing across to make that happen. So tilt your strings down, really make sure that your racket face is closed by about 45 degrees and you do that with your top hand, tilting down toward the ground and then really swing up, not across, but swing up and you'll actually have an easier time not being so close to the ball because if somebody's close to the ball, it's typically because they have learned to make it work. So they don't close the racket and they swing across. So tilt the strings down and swing up more. Uh, somebody asked the question. I'm going to answer two more questions. Somebody asked the question about the kick serve. Uh, best grip for the kick serve. So that's an interesting question because we have to understand two parts on the hand. So you want to understand the base knuckle and the heel pad. This is typically what you hear, but that's not enough. Every grip, you must monitor where the heel pad is as well. So what I teach on the kick serve is the base knuckle, continental, the heel pad, halfway between an Eastern backhand and a continental. So if you're right-handed, your base knuckle is gonna go on this panel. And if you are right-handed, your heel pad's gonna go up here. So the knuckle and heel pad are not on the same spot. So there's your answer. All right, let's see, I think we got one more. My serve was great, but now it's legit amazing. I struggled a bit with the elbow. I use your tip to hit a few serves with the back of the strings. Uh, for printing, now it's 100, oh my gosh. Ruben, that's amazing. That is so awesome. Uh, yeah, Euros, thank you so much. Euros, if you'd like, it's really simple. If you go to twominutetennis.net right now, uh, you can become a premium member for 40 bucks and that gives you four, and you can cancel anytime. Ghost, thank you so much. Ghost, thank you for the five bucks. That's so nice of you, thank you. How kind. I really appreciate that. Thank you really, really much. Thank you so much. Uh, Euros, you can go to twominutetennis.net and become a premium member of my website. It's 40 bucks for a month, $40 a month, but you can cancel any time, right? You can say, look, I'm going to be a member for six months, whatever. You get four classes a month with me live on Wednesday nights, but it's Zoom. So I can see you, you can see me, I can see you demonstrating. You also get a free 
uh, one hour Zoom private lesson with me, which is normally $120, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. You send me videos of your serve, your forehand, your backhand. I have two today. I have a Zoom lesson that's starting in 13 minutes, so I've got to finish pretty soon here. Uh, and we can analyze your strokes. We can put you side by side with the pros. I'll analyze match footage of you playing and your footwork and your shot selection. Um, you get my uh, master your serve, master your forehand and master your double strategy course with more courses coming in the spring once the weather gets nice. Oh my gosh, thank you Euros, that is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Hey, Eric, what's up? By the way, Eric is one of my premium members and I've got a class on him. In fact, Eric, if you can see me, here are my notes. Look, there's your name, buddy. There's your name. I got my notes for our class tonight. I got a class in 12 minutes with a member, and then I've got Eric tonight. He's one of my Zoom, uh, Zoom lessons tonight. So Eric, I'm super excited. I've already got your notes for you. Chris, this is like three, three people. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. So thank you all so much. So I've already got a couple premium members on here right now. If you would like me to personally improve your technique, your serve, your forehand, your backhand, Become a premium member. And Eric, I hope you're joining me tomorrow night for our uh, members class. Uh, uh, it's every, it's an hour long. It's every Wednesday night. And uh, you also get a free Zoom private lesson included with the membership, one. And then any future, it's 50% off, which is really cool. Um, you get 50% off. So that $120 as a member cuts down to 60 uh, every Zoom lesson that you take. So guys, I got to get going. Thank you so much. I got a Zoom private lesson starting in 10 minutes. So I do have to prepare for that. Uh, any questions that I did not answer, you can always hit me up uh, on direct message on Instagram, which is always super popular. You can also throw it in the uh, comment section below this video once I post it, or just send me a uh, an email, ryan at twominutetennis.net. And again, go to, thanks Ruben, thank you so much. That was so kind of you. Um, if you go to twominutetennis.net, you can check out what I have to offer, including me personally teaching you no matter where you are in the world. I just had a lesson with a guy in Dubai a couple days ago, on Friday actually. I teach people in Germany and Australia and South Africa. I teach a lot of coaches, by the way. I teach a lot of coaches on how to teach their students. If you are a coach and you need help teaching your students, you can become a premium member. You can get half price Zoom lessons with me. You can get a free Zoom lesson with that premium membership uh, when you sign up. And I'm teaching coaches how to teach their players. They send me videos of their students. And I sit down with the coach and I teach them what to do and then they teach their students. It is awesome. So thanks guys, have a great day and you got this.